The top five mistakes in tango milongas. Milonga is where tango is dance, a dance party. I wanted to make this video because I had some embarrassing experiences the first time I went on a tango floor. And I wanted to share with these experiences with you and also how you can avoid these mistakes. Mistake number one is the tandas. At a milonga, music is played in sets called tandas. Usually three or four songs are played by the same orchestra followed by the cortina or the curtain, which signals the end of the tanda. If you ask someone to dance and they accept, it is assumed that it will be for the entire tanda or the complete set. You must walk your partner back to their table. Under no circumstances should you correct your partner while on the dance floor. Now, this is what happened to me. I asked the lady out. When the first song was over, I said, thanks, thank you, and I started walking away. And she said, hey, you're supposed to dance the whole three or four dances in one set. So, and then I wasn't walking her back to the table, and she says to me, you know, you're supposed to walk me back to the table. It's only tango etiquette. So under no circumstances do you stop dancing. If you start the tanda, you have to complete it. If you finish the dance, you have to take your partner back to the table. And under no circumstances, you correct your partner while on the dance floor because malongas are for dancing and being in the moment, in the magic of the dance, and in the flow, but not to learn to dance. If someone is not dancing right, just don't dance with them the next time then. Mistake number two, cortinas. Cortinas are an interesting little detail at a milonga. A cortina is unique to each DJ. Because, you know, most milongas and tango music is danced to recorded music. Because there aren't that many uh, tango bands around. So some DJs will select one cortina for an evening, and some will use a different one for each tanda. Some are humorous, some are grating on the air, some are simply beautiful music. In any case, the cortina is supposed to be a piece of music that people know not to dance to. It's your signal to smile, say thank you, and possibly change partners. Now, the idea of this is that you do not go on the dance floor while there is a cortina. The cortina or the curtain comes down, you, everybody gets off the dance floor, gives you the opportunity to talk to your partner, to a new partner, and opportunity to change partners. So remember, when they put the cortina, which sometimes even the Beatles are played, or cha-cha, or, or swing music, all kinds of different music is played to be different from tango music, so you know it's a cortina and not to be danced to. Mistake number three, saying thank you. I was not aware of this. Accepting a dance or saying no thank you. Accepting a dance is as simple as saying yes. You can do this with your eyes, be on the look out for people who ask the Argentinian way, or by accepting a direct invitation. If you, it is also perfectly acceptable to say no thank you. If you accept the dance, remember it will probably last for the remainder of the tanda that is playing. Three or four songs if you start at the beginning. If each one of you decide that one of the two dances is enough, however, each person may simply say thank you and begin leaving the dance floor. Once you say thank you to someone in a polite manner, the dance with that person is over. So. If you take out a lady and you are a, dance, a terrible dancer and she doesn't want to dance with you, when that first dance is over and she says thank you, that's your cue that you blew it. Same thing for the ladies. If you're dancing with a gentleman and the first dance ends and he felt that you were not synchronized together, he would say thank you for the dance, walk you back to your table and accept it. So be, white, be weary of that word thank you. Mistake number four, asking for a dance. How someone asks for a dance in Argentina, men ask women to dance with a look, a certain glance, movement of the head towards the dance floor, or smile that says, dance with me. This can take place from far across the room if the right eyes are caught. If a woman wants to accept the dance with a man, she smiles back and most important, keeps looking at him while he approaches her. 
The slightest glance away is usually interpreted as meaning I've changed my mind and don't want to dance. This system is very wonderful, but full of pitfalls. What if the asker is looking at the woman behind you? Did you really see a yes or a maybe? Because we are caught up in this Argentinian art form, the practice of asking people to dance with the eyes is also followed to some extent. In many areas of the world, however, you may ask someone to dance directly or with your best Argentine dance, eyes. As in the dance, practice makes perfect. Another rule of Argentine dance is, unlike in swing or salsa or American music, women do not ask the men out to dance. That's one of the little cultural uh, rules. Mistake number five, talking and dance lane. Tango is dancing lanes that keep moving. The more experienced dancers tend to stay towards the outside. Tango is a traveling dance. The line of dance is counterclockwise. One must maintain common dance flow when dancing at the outer perimeter. If you find yourself interrupting the dance flow, move towards the center to let others pass you. Now, the reason for this counterclockwise and going in a circle is because in Argentina, many of the places are small and there are a lot of dancers on the dance floor. So by creating this circular motion, keeps the flow and gives everybody a space to dance. And that's another reason why don't get uh, doing show-stopping moves and kicking and all kinds of fancy stuff if the dance is full of people. Customarily, talking is inappropriate while dancing tango. Talk between songs when off the dance floor. If you must talk on the floor, keep it to a minimum. It is especially inappropriate to talk on the floor while a live band is performing. Now, the reason for this, not talking again, I bring it up again, is you want to be in the moment. You want to be in the flow. You want to be in the euphoria and the enjoyment of the pleasure of being two people together, synchronized and swaying to the music. Which brings us to the tango community. There's a feeling of community and inclusion in the Hudson Valley tango population. There was always room for new members to come onto the dance floor. Tango dances are taking place all over the Hudson Valley, the world, and the Strikes area. We recommend that before you dare go out there and get on that floor, take some lessons. It's very important. This is a very stylized dance that has basic rules of footwork. But once you learn that, it's an improvisational dance. You improvise as you go. Uh, as famous tango dancer once said, you never dance the same tango twice. So what are you waiting for? Call Daniel Dance Studio, who we recommend, because they happen to be from Argentina. They came to the States to teach tango. Call them at 845-475-6006. Their studio is at 464 Main Street, Beacon, New York, and they have a satellite in Newburgh and in Kingston. Uh, their website is danjodancecompany.com or you can call or go on the website of tangounderthetent.com which is a non-for-profit tango organization. We are making available over 700 videos on our YouTube channel, Tango on the Hudson. Uh, we also up, just uploaded uh, some really charming videos uh, uh, animation videos to teach you some tango rules. In our 700 videos, we include the uh, uh, bandolon music, which is the Argentine accordion, uh, mixed music, tango orchestras, uh, famous tango singers, tango performances, tango music, and tango lessons. So be sure to check it out. And be sure to subscribe to this channel, get the word out, and share with all your friends. You know, tango is the dance of love, and if you're not in love, you may find a love. See you on the tango floor. Until the next one, please share, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.